Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm just going to run through some of the real basic um, blueprint and scripts that we'll probably end up using throughout this project. So I'm just using the visual scripting project, which is supplied to the students on the module. Um, if anyone doesn't have a copy of it, um, I'll try and put one in the description of the video below or they can contact me via email. So uh, the first thing, the first little task that we're asked to do is create a dimming light. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a, uh, a blueprint here that we can step into and then adjust the light uh, intensity over time. So we'll do a couple of different versions. So, um, so all I've done is I've just got my folder open here at the minute. I've got a folder called blueprints and then I'm going to make it in here. Um, so if I right click and choose blueprint class, it's asking me which type of one I want, which type of parent class. This is just going to be an actor. Um, so I click on that and it makes one. So I'm just going to name it BP underscore light. So from there, I can drop it in the game world. It doesn't really have much in here at the minute. So if I was to hit play, uh, you wouldn't see it. So if we double click on this blueprint, that'll open up the editor. So left hand side is where we can add components. And we can also add variables and functions. Right hand side is our details panel. So the minute um, anything we click on, the details panel gets updated. So first of all, we need to add a component to this. So we're going to add a light. So if we search for light, we're going to choose a point light. And then we can modify where it sits inside this blueprint actor. So if I dock this in the second window, we flip over. So there we can see it's getting updated as we drop it in. So just so we can see this, we'll adjust this light a little bit. So make it red. Okay, so we might need to move it down a little bit. There we go. Um, so as I update stuff here, you can see that it updates in real time. Uh, inside the editor so that's fine so if we have play our blueprint sitting in there and the only component it has is a light component at the minute so this is where we can add in our functionality so we can add in different components here so what we'll do is we'll pop over to the event graph and we have some pre-existing kind of starting nodes here so event begin play is what happens whenever the game starts so whenever the actor starts in the game world uh, event actor begin overlap is when something overlaps with it and then event tick is every tick of the game so what we're going to do is we're going to do event begin play um, and we're going to start using this light now so if i drag and drop this in here now when we drag off this little node we can adjust um, components or different kind of parts of this point light so we can do different things to this specific object um, you'll notice when you drag off, you've got this little box here called contact sensitive. That means that when I type, it'll it'll only appear stuff which is related to this object that I've dragged off. So it won't let me do things that I can't apply to this object when contact sensitive is ticked on. Um, so if I drag there and I think, right, well, I want to do the visibility of it. So if I was just to start typing visibility, you can see that we've got different options here. Okay, so what we'll do is we will go with set visibility. So on event begin play, we're going to drag up there and we'll say, right, we want it to delay. Um, we want it to delay three seconds. And then once that's finished, we want it to set the visibility. And there we go. Okay, so all that's happening is this, the game is starting it's waiting three seconds and then it's setting the visibility. So we're not going to end up using this, so we can delete this and delete this. What we want to do is something a little bit more advanced. So we're going to add in a collider here. So if we search for box, this is a piece of box collision. If we flick onto the viewport, you can see it appears there. What I like to do just for debugging purposes is by default, these are hidden in the game. When I'm working and I'm developing some scripts, I'll always tick this off. 
because now we can actually see it in the editor. So it's handy for us testing stuff. If we step over this now, we know that we're stepping on the right collider. Um, so we're just gonna scale that up a little bit. So these are your widgets here for scaling. So we'll scale this up just a little bit. So it's a little bit easier for us to step in there and we'll move it up. So if we look at it there, it's nice and easy to see. So from here, what we wanna do now is we're gonna actually use this to drive some functions in the game. So if we scroll down on the right hand side, when we have this box collider selected, we have different um, events that we can call. So one's begin overlap. So if we click on that, so this is when you begin an overlap, we can then call something to happen. So we're gonna try and set the intensity. Set intensity. And it's going to give it a new intensity of, we'll say 50, which is quite low. So on begin overlap, it's going to set the intensity to be low. There we go. Now what's happening there is it's not actually checking which, um, what is colliding with it. So something that we can do is we can say the thing that's overlapping with it, can we get the class and can we check is it equal to a specific class and then we can specify some so I know that I'm playing as a first person character so I can say to it if it's the first person character if that's true then set the intensity if that's false then you might display a message on screen. But in this case, it'll get that far. If it's false, it won't do it. So this is just a check that's happening now. There we go. So that's working fine. So it's checking to see if it's a character. One of these, it's doing that. But the next thing we want to do is we don't want it to just happen straight away. We actually want to fade out the light as you step into it. So what we can do here is we can drag off and we can ask it to make a thing called timeline. So add timeline. We're going to call it light underscore intensity. So what's going to happen now is whenever we step in, it's going to play this timeline and that's going to update the light intensity. But if we double click on here, we can come in and we can make a graph which will drive this so different ones you can add you can add a float track which is just a, a decimal value um, you can add a vector which is like xyz coordinates so what we're going to do is we're going to do a float one for this um, and i'm just going to call it light intensity value so by default this is set to five seconds so if you want to add a frame you hold down can shift and click so I'm going to add in two frames to begin with. This frame here, I'm going to select it. I'm going to say, this is the zero seconds frame. And by default, that's going to be, let's say 3000, which is quite a large number. Last one will be the five second frame. And that's going to be zero. So if you want to see the full graph, you can click these. One zooms the horizontal, one zooms the vertical. So when this timeline plays now, the value is just going to decrease over time. And then what we want to do is we want to plug that in to this value here. So whenever this, whenever this steps in the overlap, make sure it's a player. It's going to start this timeline. This timeline is going to spit out this value on the update. And then that's going to update the intensity. So if we were to hit play, you see now it's gradually fading and then it fades away. And then what you can do is you can call something else on the finished. Um, so that might be whenever that's finished, we want to destroy the actor. And the actor is set to self, which means it's going to destroy this entire blueprint. So wait for us to see if that works is we're going to step in. It's going to start draining down. The timeline finishes and then it deletes itself. So the actor has been deleted from the game world. So that's a real quick intro 
on just how to do an overlap, how to check to see if it's a particular class that's hitting it. The reason we're doing this is we could be shooting bullets in the level. We don't want the overlaps to start firing off if the bullets go into the trigger box by mistake. We're playing a little timeline and now we're setting a variable based on that timeline. 